Hello everyone and welcome here. So today I'm going to do a tutorial on creating 4D roses with acrylic. I'm using the colors Pearl White and Pastel Coral. You can use any colors you want. You can use one color, but I'm just using two to show you how cool it looks when you double dip. You can also do this with three or four colors. It does depend on what you want. What I'm going to create the flowers on is a backing paper. Um, when you use forms, the paper that the forms are stick on, sticked onto. Um, I prefer creating flowers like this because um, when you place it directly onto the nails, it gets a little bit hard to form and mold into the way you want it to. On backing paper, it doesn't stick easily, so you can easily remove petals and place them where you want. It's not that easy when doing it onto the nail directly. So yeah, I'm just using my brush and applying a little bead of the pearl white. That's going to be the starting point for my rose. It's where I'm going to stick all of the petals to. Now I'm placing the center piece of the rose. I'm working from the middle outwards. So I'm double dipping my brush into the pearl white and the coral. The color that you want to be shown at the tip of the petals is the color that you should dip into the second time around. I'm just flattening out the petal. I'm making it quite thin, but not too thin so that it easily rips. And I'm making a little C with my brush in the middle. This is because I, for the center piece of the rose, it's um, like a little Swiss roll. So for it to look a lot more natural, create a C and when you, once you twirl it and place it in the middle, you'll see that it looks a lot better than what it would if you just created like a square shape. While that's drying, I'm placing my first petal. Now, I like to work in larger petals. You can use smaller ones and then place one at a time. You'll see what I mean later on, but I'm just placing them. They're a little bit bigger than needs to be. So then I'm folding it around the rose and bending it so that it gives the illusion of multiple petals when it's actually just one. I'm also creating a little bit of a C shape, but not as much as the centerpiece of the rose. Now I'm just using the tip of my brush brush to gently lift the side of the center piece. You can use your nail or anything like that because it can be a little bit hard to use your brush. Just lift it up and twirl it around, stick it so that it looks like a little like a little Swiss roll. <laughs> if you find that it's struggling to stick to each other, just wait your brush a little bit because the monomer will um, cause the acrylic to become sticky. Now for this you have to find the perfect, you have to have perfect timing. Mm -hmm. It does take a little bit of practice but anything that you practice enough will come to you like second nature in time. So the perfect density you want the acrylic to be is not completely hard but you don't want it to be squishy and wet in the center so you just have to find that perfect consistency. I'm just placing it down on the flat piece of white and I'm placing another bead of coral just so it stands upright and not lays to the side. Using my brush I bent some of the petals of the centerpiece just to make it look a little bit more natural. I really like natural looking acrylic roses, but the way you want it depends on you. When I'm lifting my other petal, you can see that it causes a little bit of creasing to occur. I like it when it does that because it looks like a real rose petal. No petals are perfect and I don't want my roses to look artificial. Now I'm just sticking it to the side of that centerpiece. Once it's stuck, I use the tip of my brush just to bend it down. 
and to fold it and create little dents to make it look like real roses. You can see where this is going and you can already see the rose coming together. The size of the rose depends on the amount of petals you create and also the size of the petals. So if you want to create a tiny rose, you have to minimize the size of your roses a lot, the size of your petals. Um, I use a number six acrylic brush, but it, it can be better if you use a smaller brush like a number four because then you will generally pick up a smaller bead of acrylic and it will be easier to create smaller roses. I know that you can find acrylic molds where you can just place the acrylic into the mold and a beautiful rose comes out, but I just really like this method of creating roses. It makes me feel creative, like I've made something. <laughs> If you want to just create a rose bud, you can just create the centerpiece with one or two petals and fold it so that it looks like a rose bud that hasn't completely opened yet. Possibilities are really endless. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider commenting down below and liking the video. Um, as I said before, I am new to YouTube, but I'm trying to post more regularly now. So if there's any type of video you would like to see, please comment. I also have a nail blog called The Nail Tech Diaries, which I will link down below. I am a nail technician, so I write posts about tips and tricks when you are a nail tech, how to work with clients also trends and how to do nail art but even if you're not a nail tech and you're just really passionate about nails this can be for you as well so placing the nest next petal i turn the rows around and let the first and the second one overlap a little bit It takes a little while for my petals to dry. It is winter in South Africa at the moment and that really affects the amount of time it takes for the acrylic to dry properly. But if it's warmer, you'll have to work a little bit faster. Just a tip, be careful when moving the backing paper so that the rose doesn't detach from it. Um, it can happen because the rose isn't super fastened to the backing paper. That's the whole reason to build it on here and not directly onto the nail. Once the rose becomes detached, it can be quite a, a little bit harder to work with it. and You'll have to retach it. If you want your petals to have little shapes in them, um, like you would with leaves, they have little patterns on the leaves. Um, when the acrylic is almost dry, you can use your brush to create those patterns onto the leaf before it's completely dried. This will also give it a more natural effect. But I find when lifting the acrylic from the backing paper, while it's not completely dry, it creates natural creases already. So you can see how it's coming together already. 
here I'm just showing you if the acrylic does that it's really not ready to be picked up yet what's gonna happen when you try to pick it up it's just gonna rip I would really love to hear from you guys if this video has been helpful in any way please comment down below and tell me if you've tried it and if it worked for you just remember that it's it is easy but it's not as easy as it looks when someone does it I spent a lot of time practicing so it's normal if your first couple roses come out wrong it's just gonna take time and practice like anything And it's fine if you place a petal down and it, it it doesn't work out like you can see the petal I placed down in the left corner I didn't use it because it ripped so it still happens to me even though I've been practicing a lot it is normal so don't be discouraged if you're struggling in the beginning I created an Adams Family inspired set previously where I did 40 roses and I created them with black acrylic so I went for a wilted look um, the roses I placed down the one looked like it was dying so it's really cool you can create any type of look you want something that I find really helps when wanting to go for a more natural look is downloading an image from Google to use as a reference when creating roses it can give you a better idea how the petals look and how they should be positioned So now I'm creating little leaves for my rose. Um, I just used the same colors. You can obviously use other colors like green, whatever you want. Um, yeah, I find placing them on the backing paper also makes it a lot easier for me because I can create them a lot more naturalistically. I, f I, I struggle a little bit with creating leaves directly on the nail feels like I'm not really in control then.
So before the acrylic is dry, I'm just using my brush to twist the leaf a little bit. Um, I really like this effect that I get when creating leaves, um, twisting them and making them curl inwards a little bit. It looks really cool. If you find you're struggling um, with the petals to have them stick to one another um, and monomer is not helping, you can always use a little bead of the same color you're using to create the rose or clear acrylic. Just place it on the side you want to stick the petal to and then place your petal down. I'm just placing the leaves um, using my nail and just pressing the leaf so that it curls forward a little bit, creates a little groove in the middle. When sticking the flowers to the nails, um, you still have to cover them with top coat because otherwise it's going to get dirty really easily and look horrible. Um, especially if your clients do stuff like hair, if they're in the salon industry, anything like that. Um, what I find really worked uh, when doing my clients nails, I put a, a matte top coat over it. I used a tiny art brush 
and covered each petal individually it does take time but that just looks a lot better than putting a blob of top coat onto the rose directly because what's going to happen all of the top coats going to pull onto the petals where they come together and it's going to take away from all of the detail that you've worked so hard to achieve if it looks like i'm sticking the um, the leaves to the backing paper i'm not i'm bending the bottom part of the leaves down and I'm sticking them to the side of the rows. When sticking the rows you'll see the bottom part of the rose is going to be flat. I'm going to show you that shortly. Um, something else you can do is while the rose is still drying, while the bottom part is still drying, bend the backing paper onto the nail so that the rose dries in a rounded shape that will help the rose to stick more naturally to the nail because the bottom part's already going to be rounded no nail is naturally flat um, but what i do is i take some clear acrylic and place it onto the nail and then i work the rose into it and if there's any part sticking up i just place more clear acrylic down it's not really visible and if it is you can always decorate using rhinestones or pearls or anything like that so this is what the rose looks like before any top coat or anything it is pretty cool it's not too big but just to give you an idea you can Create bigger ones, smaller, any size. It just takes practice and the size uh, of the beads that you put down. Um, that's going to determine the size of the rose. So you can see the bottom part of the rose is flat. That's why I placed that first bead of pearl white acrylic down in the first place. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and if you enjoyed this video, like and comment down below. See you next time.